we're going to get started. Um, for, we're starting a little bit late. Um, hi, everybody. How's it going? Uh, my name is Francesca. Um, I'm actually like, this is kind of a niche talk, so I'm actually super thrilled by the number of people <laughs> that are here. Um, so I'm going to be talking about um, soft circuits and e-textiles and wearable technology. Um, so first, this is me. Um, so my name is Francesca. I'm the president and co-founder of Contigo Games. Uh, we're a small independent game studio. We focus mostly on multiplayer game experiences, usually collaborative, um, so that players can have a good time hanging out and playing games with each other. Uh, I also work with Girls Make Games as an ambassador and instructor. Uh, so Girls Make Games runs um, summer camps and workshops around for like um, for around like middle school age girls. Um, in order to get them introduced to like coding and game development and co uh, considering a career in technology. Um, and I also am a graduate student right now at the New York University Game Center um, where I am, uh, I'll be graduating in the spring and I'm frantically, frantically, frantically working on my thesis right now. Um, so almost done with that. But um, yeah, so those are the things that I do and this is where you can find me. Okay. Um, oh, and also uh, just a quick, mention of like things I'm working on right now. Um, so uh, in the top left is a project that I'm working on that I will mention a little bit in this talk. Um, it's called Hell Couch. It's a playable co-op, it's a couch co-op game where the couch is the controller. Um, so the idea is that each of the cushions is a button and you actually have to jump around and play it with your butt. Um, it's, <laughs> um, it's really fun and if you're headed to GDC this year, we'll be in the alt control showcase, which I'm very excited about. Um, on the right uh, is a game I worked on. It's a tabletop um, like uh, strategy game called Chroma. It's about color blending, so you capture territory by blending colors. Um, and this is the game that I'm working on currently with my um, studio, Contigo Games. This is Starcrossed. It's a cooperative multiplayer um, action arcade game about magical girls in space. Um, yeah, so that's that's what I do. But um, so we're going to talk a little bit about soft circuits and e-textiles. Um, is anyone here like? familiar with e-textiles or have, has worked with it before, a few people, awesome. Um, this is something that came into my life somewhat recently um, and when I was thinking about like things that I would like to talk about and share with other people, I was like, man, I wish I knew about this like five years ago. Um, so I hope that it sort of broadens your horizons and you're, you think about technology and hardware a little bit differently um, at the end of this talk. So, um, when we think about technology, um, we don't usually think of adjectives like flexible, soft, uh, wearable. Um, so electronic textiles, which are also known as smart garments sometimes, um, are fabrics which include electronic components such as lights, sensors, um, et cetera, et cetera, to create wearable technologies and also al um, alternative controllers for games. Um, yeah, so I wish like I really wish I could have done this as like a workshop because I think it's really important to actually be fiddling with materials and like experimenting because then you kind of realize the, the magic of this stuff. Um, so maybe next time we'll do a workshop. That'd be really fun. Um, okay, so here's sort of like what we're gonna run through. Since we can't do a workshop, um, I'm gonna show some examples of um, what currently exists in this field and sort of the different uses um, or um, like the different ways that e-textiles are currently being used. Um, and then uh, we're going to talk about like how we can start using these materials um, to develop alternative controller games. So if you're working on digital games currently, how can we use some of this information and technology to create like really cool interfaces for things we're already building? Um, and then at the end of this talk, I'll give you a, a ton of resources. So if you are curious and want to explore a little bit on your own, you have some places to do that. Um, okay, so we're gonna start with some examples of cool things that you can use um, soft circuits and e-textiles for. So the first thing is fashion, um, which is like self-explanatory, it looks really cool. <laughs> um, so something I learned somewhat recently is that you can 3D print fabric. You can also uh, just 3D print onto regular fabric and make like rigid structures on fabric that you can then sew into like costumes and things. That was something I had no idea was even a possibility, this hybrid of like garment creation, costume creation and technology. Um, so I think that's super rad. Um, this isn't exactly like textiles, but I would consider this to be a soft circuit. Um, this is still fashion, but also um, is currently being used for medical purposes. Um, you can 
get conductive ink and conductive um, paint also. And um, you can basically draw circuits on your body as like temporary tattoos. Um, so the one on the right here is actually um, a temporary tattoo that um, is being used to monitor someone's temperature. Um, so you're able to use it for like medical purposes as well. And like, yeah, that blew my mind <laughs> that you can do that. Um, cool. Here's a really cool example I found of like wearable technology that's being used for like safety in everyday situations. So this is like bikers who are able to like signal with LEDs that is on the back of their jackets. Um, so different things like this about like wearable technology and how we could harness that to better the world we live in and just make things easier in general. Um, this one's really cool. I'm going to show a video of it actually, if it works. Um, but so this is a project called E-Traces, which creates a drawing through the movements of a dancer with sensors placed in the ballet shoe. So this is an example of like e-textiles used for art and like taking art as it exists and like turning it into different art. <laughs> so like expanding on the art. So let's see, I should be hooked up to the internet, so we'll see if it... Yeah, so here's just like a quick example of kind of how this works. I don't want to take too much time. It's very artsy, so we'll just skip to the part where like... So this is using sensors that are tracking like the quick motions of the ballet shoe and are interpreting them into like a visual design. everything? I might have just closed everything. Ooh, all right. Well, we can keep talking while I set that up again. Sorry, one second. Um, yeah, but so I think it's it's really interesting, like, in terms of thinking about, um, like, games as we know them and as they exist already, um, how we could use some of this these ideas and these practices and this technology to actually further our experience and our immersion with the games that we are already creating. I'm gonna get this up as fast as I can. Okay, now I know not to do that. Okay, we're, we're back up. Okay. In two seconds. Maybe, it's loading. Um, but yeah, I think that like when I started learning about um, when I started learning about um, like e-textiles, it was in um, it was in the context of alternative controllers. Um, so figuring out like how can we design even like experiences that are entirely um, like are still digital and still using electronics, but are not actually like utilizing a screen at all. So I think that opens up a lot of opportunity for. Um, focusing more on like um, player to player interactions because you don't need to look at a screen. You can just be looking, you know, at, um, at the person you're playing with or like um, be more immersed in this sort of experience that is taken away from like, you know, this physical object of a screen that um, we're so used to like looking at all the time. Okay, sorry about that. I will not do that anymore. Mm. Look at all this cool stuff we talked about. Um, <laughs> All right, here's where I'm gonna try to open up like other videos and stuff, but we'll, we'll, we'll see how it works. Um, so this um, is an example of um, some really, really awesome um, alternative controller games that utilize um, e-textiles. So this is by um, a, a professor of mine who like got me started with these things called, um, her name is Kaho Abe. Um, so this project on the left is Mary Mac 5000 and the one on the right is Hotaru. Um, in these games, um, they're very gesture focused. So these are games where you're playing with another person um, and you're able to interact with the other person sort of like in real space by using these sort of costumes. Um, and with Hotaru as well, um, different game states are actually triggered by how you're standing and how you're moving. So it's a really cool game about like doing these really like, like they're doing like a very like dramatic like victory pose or something and like that triggers the end of the game. Um, and in Mary Mac, it's actually, um, it's like a digital electronic patty cake game. So they're taking something that's like a very basic design principle and they're putting all these really cool like 
bells and whistles on it of like sensors and like you know which hands are touching at different times because you're using conductive fabric on each of the little mittens that they wear. Um, and I think that's just like the coolest thing. How much time do I have? I think I can show this video and maybe it won't blow up. Let's see. Um, cool. Oh, I see because it was in tabs. Got it. Um, yeah, so in this one, the idea is that one of the players is um, charging like a device that is going to save you from like alien invaders. I'll skip ahead. And the other person has to actually um, like take that energy and then do a gesture to like actively use it in the game. Um, so the way that it works is this person's charging a battery by doing this gesture like this of like charging, charging, charging. And then they have to hold hands in order to transfer the energy to the other player. And then once it's charged and you can see it visually on the gauntlet with LED lights, then you shoot it. So I think this is a really cool way of like, you know, this, this could be really easily implemented as a digital game with, with visuals you're seeing on a screen. But because you're, you're, you're like physically charging it up and physically doing the action, it becomes this incredibly awesome experience. Um, and this time, I'm gonna close the tab. There we go. Um, and then I want to show the other one because we don't have too much time, but the other one is, all, yeah, it's like a patty cake game where you have to do like combos basically of like clapping with your partner. Um, and I think that's also a really cool physical experience where you have to be communicating with the person that you're playing with and like figure out how you're gonna approach this problem and how you're gonna play patty cake, <laughs> which I think is really cool. Um, so I'm gonna show also a project that I worked on. Um, so this, um, this is a project called Shark Attack. It was the, one of the first like costumes as controllers projects I ever worked on. Um, so three of the players wear shark puppets and they swim together to start the game. So we're using little gyroscopes. So they, like everyone has to be like ready to play and you do that by like doing a little swimming motion. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, all of a sudden one player is chosen as the attacker and has to try to eat one of the other sharks um, by like physically biting them with the puppet. Um, so the first person to successfully bite other players five times wins. Um, so I'll show what it looks like. This is me like, I was very enthusiastically playing it. I was having a good time. Um, but you see that sort of like, <laughs> um, like the, phys the physicality of it, because you're so close to the other players, it becomes this very intense experience. This is me, like, I was having a really good time. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, and this over here is Kaho, who worked on the other games. Um, so just, like, yeah, it becomes a very physical thing of, like, you know, moving towards another player and coming away from another player and, like, trying to hide. But you're, like, um, in this version, you're wired, so you can't really go that far away. You can't, like, leave the room. Um, but so here, um, the way that we, we made these is that we're, made, we're using um, conductive fabric and also conductive tape, which you can see a little bit on the inside of the mouths. Um, so basically how it's working is that when you bite another shark, you're completing a circuit, and then that's how it knows that you successfully um, like bit a shark. Um, so the way that, the way that um, circuits work as like a very, very basic, basic explanation is basically like, you can think about like power travels in a circle. Um, so to connect it, your circuit has to be a circle. So in this sense, each shark is like one of those and when they touch, it's completing the circuit. I think I have to go back over here. I got fancy with this PowerPoint. Um, yeah, so here's like a visual representation of a super, super basic circuit. Um, so in this case, the switch is the sharks. So when they, when they close, the circuit is complete, and then that is sending a signal back to the computer that is letting it know that that is something that happened. Um, so the, the way that we um, built Shark Attack, so the way that, um, so I said like we used like conductive fabric. Um, we didn't use any conductive threading. We actually just wired directly to the fabric, which is probably not the best way to do it. Um, but I think the fun thing about working with these materials is like being able to experiment and see what works and what, what horribly doesn't work. Um, so we uh, used an Arduino. So this is an Arduino over here. Um, I used to think they looked um, super, super intimidating because <laughs> it has all these parts and I don't know what they mean and what is like AO1, like, oh, it's analog. Okay, that's analog input. It's like, it has all these components, um, and it, but it's also about like, it's like this big. And you can basically think of it as like this adorable mini computer. 
Um, so Shark Attack is running entirely off of like an Arduino. We're not actually using any like computer or anything like that. Um, so I think, um, yeah, I think like a lot of the components and a lot of this stuff can be intimidating if you're someone who doesn't have like an electronics background. Um, but part of why I wanted to give this talk is just to discuss how these tools are actually quite accessible and there's a lot of support and documentation online and it's very easy to like create um, like a shark attack style game where you know you're focused on this interaction between players that's that's like the mechanic that's the gameplay is this interpersonal interaction um, and actually like the code behind that game is very very minimal um, but it, it does rely on the experience to make it like a compelling um, yeah compelling experience and a compelling game um, yeah, so uh, we use a lot of like individual, so like individual sensors, um, which like you can buy at like any electronics store. But um, a lot of our sensors and things, like all of the sensors we're using for like Hellcouch, those were all homemade. We made them out of like foam and conductive tape. Um, so it kind of feels like you're doing like arts and crafts when you're building like electronics projects. Um, yeah, so I, I also learned um, recently, I wanted to show you this really cool thing of a sensor that you can build at home that I recently learned how to make, and it's a, um, it's a stretch sensor that is made out of conductive yarn. So when you, uh oh, maybe my link doesn't work. I tried to get fancy and there we go, okay. Um, so the idea of this one is basically it's passing um, it's passing electricity through the yarn, but when you pull it, the thread is, or the threading of the yarn is becoming tighter, so it's easier for electricity to pass through it. Um, so this sensor is basically, um, like, it's able to tell you when it is fully stretched because the values and the electricity that is being passed is flowing more easily. Um, and this is something that, like, you can just, like, crochet at home. So you'll see that, like, when, when the sensor is stretched, the LED light has more electricity and is able to light up further. And I was like, I didn't realize, yeah, you could literally take some yarn and like make an electronic sensor. Isn't that, I don't know, I think that's like the most amazing thing. Um, let me close that before it plays another video. Um, yeah, so like a lot of this stuff is like very like arts and crafts if you like working with physical materials. Um, like I, I think we think about like technology, we think about hardware as being this very like mystical, cold, inaccessible thing that we like don't really know how it works, it just like does stuff. Um, but I, I, I wanna like communicate that um, working with like e-textiles is very like, it's like, it's, it's like arts and crafts and it's, it's a very creative way to work. Um, which I think is awesome. Cool, so we're back. Um, so this is the big slide of resources if you wanna take a picture. Um, so I'll just go through sort of like the different ones that are on here. Um, so we have Arduino, the Arduino website. Um, that's really great for, you can, um, you can buy Arduino kits. So they sell like starter kits that just have lots of little things that you can play with and, and figure out. But they also have a ton of like example projects, a ton of tutorials. Um, so it's a really easy way to get started. Um, Adafruit.com is also the same where they sell both like components, but they also do a lot of just like you know, here's a little project you can do with a bunch of pretty LED lights and here's how to go through that and here's how to set that up. Um, SparkFun is good for like buying individual components. Um, I would also say like, um, my, if you go to Micro Center, they just have hallways of just like individual tiny components. Like um, I was like taking things out of my bag earlier and I just found like a light sensor in my bag for, that I had bought at some point. <laughs> um, Instructables.com um, is a really cool website. It's not just for electronics, it's actually for everything. Like there's like how to bake a cake, how to do this, how to do anything. Um, but they have very good like step-by-step -step tutorials about how to work with this stuff and, and get started. Um, um, AliExpress is another place. It's very cheap components. They're kind of hit or miss. Like you could buy like sensors for like 10 cents um, and then you have to wait like three months for them to get there and then like they don't work. Um, but that is a really, if you know exactly what you need, that's a very cost-effective way. Or if you just want to buy a bunch of stuff and experiment with it, also a very cost-effective way. Um, and then I would say if you're specifically interested in looking into like alternative controllers for games and what is already out there um, and people that are doing that work, um, then I would recommend All Control GDC, which is a, a big showcase of All Control games. 
Um, there's also a website called Shake That Button, which has a big, it's like a big archive of like, just like really cool physical projects and games that people are working on. Um, as another resource, I wanted to mention some of the people um, who I've met over the past year or so who are doing really cool things in this space. Um, so as I mentioned, um, Kaho is, is really incredible and you know, made this like, seem like something I could do, which like she opened the door for me to do that. Um, uh, Liza Stark is also, um, she specializes in e-textiles, um, so she was the one who introduced me to like the crochet sensor. Um, and she, she runs like workshops and different things all over the place, um, so she's a really cool person to know. Um, and then Amy also does a lot of just like, um, oh she makes like, um, like tech zines, so you can buy little zines that are basically tutorials and walkthroughs about hardware and electronics and like how computers work. She just um, reprinted one that's about like, how do calculators do math? Like, how does that work? And just like demystifying technology and electronics um, to a more sort of like consumable, understandable language um, for people. Yeah, so as, um, as sort of a wrap up, so we have like five minutes left, um, I think the reason that this stuff is really interesting to me and important for people to know about, um, as I mentioned earlier, um, for me at least, there was always this perception that like, hardware and electronics was something that was like difficult and like not easy to learn and something that I couldn't really tinker with because I didn't know that world or like I didn't have someone to teach me about it. Um, but I think like soft circuits and e-textiles are very approachable. They make hardware into something that is accessible and fun and crafty and creative. And I think that's why it's really important to sort of like know that this exists and that it is something that we can use for our games and for interactions um, and for real, real world applications as well. So I hope that this sort of has broadened your horizons and that you're maybe a little curious and feeling a little experimental and wanna check it out some of this stuff in the future. So thank you. I think I could take maybe like one question if anyone wants to talk about stuff. Yeah. Um, one of the slides you showed, showed at the beginning of the games mm -hmm. you were working on was about um, a color mixing territory. Game. Yeah. Did, did you say, did that have digital components to it? Or? So it has digital, digital components in the sense that like we're using LEDs to illuminate the board. Um, yeah, basically we made like a very like glamorous light board. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, initially we were just like testing on like a, an iPad that was like on a blank page or something. But um, yeah, so that's using LEDs and like, now I'm using what I learned with that project to do Hell Couch where we actually have LEDs that are communicating like game state and like things like that. So LEDs are so much fun to work with and they're so pretty and <laughs> like, even if you just do a project where like, oh, every time I open my door, like all of these LEDs turn on and they're purple and beautiful. Like you can do a lot of those things um, like e-textiles and sort of working with electronics just for like aesthetics and fun. So I think that's a cool thing to do. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Does anybody else have a short question? Yes. Um, in terms of uh, practicality, when it comes to e-textiles, mm -hmm. it's going to be worn and used, um, and you've got electronic mm -hmm. components going. Yeah. How clean have all this stuff? Can you? Yeah. Have we got to a point where we can actually throw this in a machine yet? Or is yeah. This still very specialist yeah. So I believe. Um, You'll have to check with the product you're buying generally, but usually for conductive fabric and conductive thread, that's like machine safe, um, just to wash and clean. Um, if you do have like, you know, batteries and stuff, you'll have to take that out. Um, yeah, but I think um, a, a lot of the time also, um, you can consider that in your design. Um, so like, um, as an example, like when we, when we're working on Hell Couch, we're designing it specifically in a way where we're making electronic components that can be like removed and put on different couches. Or if we need to wash the cushion covers, we're not at all like putting things inside or like things like that. So the cleaning process becomes a lot easier. Um, and then also in terms of just like usage, you do have to consider because these are softer materials and people will be like moving them, you do have to consider like um, like wire stretching or wire pulling and how like, because those things are generally less flexible, so you need to like accommodate for that. Mm -hmm. So that's why conductive thread becomes a good option sometimes, but that is very like thin and delicate and, and <laughs> tricky to use. Um, but they do, I did find out recently um, that they make like stretchy wiring that you can use for some projects as well. 
but that definitely is something you have to consider when things are in motion, <laughs> just, just designing for it. So yeah, thank you. If anyone else is like interested in, in chatting about this stuff or like getting started with it, please come find me and I'm happy to talk about it. So thank you.